All right. Boosie badass. Glad to finally have you on Camp Capone News, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. How's everything going for you? Oh, I'm good, man. I mean, I can't complain when I can complain. Yeah. I hear that. Well, what brings you to Vegas? Uh, Super Bowl. I got a couple shows. Book Friday, book Saturday. Well, book Thursday tonight. I'm book Friday. Saturday, I go to Arkansas and book. Sunday, I go to New Orleans and book. Monday, I go to Mobile. Man, Boosie's schedule stays packed, man. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Well, you're performing tonight with BG. Yeah, I'm with BG tonight. It's big for me, man. I mean, I ain't saw him physically in 14 years. So. Oh, so this is your first time, you guys' this first time seeing each other since he's been out of jail. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Last time I saw him, I was I was walking in the courthouse to do my time. Damn. Last time I saw him was November 9th, 2009. That's a minute. Yeah. You guys stayed in contact this whole time. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> That's what's up, yeah. man. And you guys are gonna perform his first show with you. You guys have new music together? Yeah, we got, we working on an album right now. Uh, Called Real Niggas Back in Style. And uh, we probably got about six more records to do. And we'll, and we'll be knocked out. But uh, now since he off, he off the anchor monitor and all that shit, we can, we can get it in and shoot some visuals and shit like that. Man, that's what's up, man. Mm -hmm. BG definitely a legend, been doing his thing. Yeah. Have you guys ever performed together or, or did anything like that together in the past? Yeah, a few times we've been on stage together. I mean, with this special right here, yeah. We never got to perform together after we done made music together. We done been on a couple shows together, but making music together, you know, when we did our mixtape, I had went off to the pen and we never got to perform the things off our mixtape we dropped before. Well, it got leaked before we went in, before I went in. And, uh, so it's it's like a it's like a real nigga anniversary, you know. Two real niggas been seeing each other, and, and I was here for him this whole time in prison. And when I went, he was in for me. So you know, real niggas do real things. Man, well that's what it is, man. You know, uh, sounds like a dope show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegas, no better place to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love Vegas, man. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean. I love yeah. the nightlife. I love the lights of Vegas. Yeah, Vegas is definitely a fun city. That's for sure. Well, I thought we would just start off with some of the biggest news about you that I've seen. And that was Kodak Black. Yeah. Uh, he released a song about three, four days ago. Yeah. And in this song, he has the line, who Boosie think he is? Yeah. What did you think, man? How did you, how'd you feel when you first uh, heard it? I wasn't mad. I mean, I wasn't mad when I heard it. I was just like, you know, I'm gonna say something, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be cool while I'm saying it. I ain't because, you know, first of all, he locked up. You know, second of all, I wasn't mad because I was more of, I, was, I wasn't mad because I know what I said. You doing a freestyle and you bringing me up, you know, every interview you bringing me up, what I said touch you. You know, I feel like uh, he had a point where he feel, now he made a mistake, you know, by doing that song and, and things like that, you know, and I was basically just telling him, you know, I want him to stop blaming me, you know. I want him to stop blaming me for his, his actions, you know, you gotta stand up and say, man, you know, I did that and keep and keep going. Cause I, before he just said that, I haven't mentioned him in, in nothing, man. I mean, I haven't, I haven't mentioned him in nothing. That's like his fourth, fifth time, just <laughs> you know, bit. But you know, He's made I don't wake songs. up, I don't wake up thinking about no Kodak, you know. I, 
<laughs> this dude don't cross my mind at all, and I don't, and I don't want to be crossing his mind like that. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want to see Lene get money, bro. I want to see him home. You know, I don't want to see nobody in the pen. I want to see him get help, bro. You know, I want to see him. I want to see him do better, man. I mean. I think he just feel like since he done that song, his shit just been, you know, it just been a crash course. And just want him to blame himself, you know, and you know, everybody get shake back, bro. I just want him to blame himself and not and not keep saying who Boosie, boo Boosie is somebody you not. Boosie is I'm nothing like I'm different. Boosie is the Boosie that I'm that nigga. In plenty of ways, you know, that's that's who Boosie is. You know, I think I am who I am. I don't think I'm nobody big, I'm Boosie. Boosie not trying to be no, Boosie is Boosie. What Boosie do, nobody does. What Boosie says, nobody says. The music I make, nobody makes it like me. My move is when I put them out. Nobody gets 100% like Boosie. Nobody's a real friend to they people or to somebody I fuck with like Boosie. The old folks love Boosie. The youngsters love Boosie. The babies love Boosie. The kids love Boosie. The preachers, the gang bangers, the, the convicts. That's who Boosie is. Boosie is Boosie, you know, and that's basically it. So you do think he could come back from from doing the song with Six Nine? I, but he'll always have a black eye. That's what I said. You know, his career will always have a black eye because it's always gonna get challenged. Because Kodak was looked at like, you know, like the real, real, real ghetto babies who stand up for all that because they didn't lost family members to that. They didn't lost kin folks to that. You know. Uh, so that'll always be a black eye. I mean, he, you know, he gave a lot of, he gave his career a black eye, you know. Black eyes heal. Facts. <laughs> you know, black eyes do heal, but somebody will always talk about that black eye. That's what a black eye is. Mm -hmm. Remember that time you had that black eye? Yeah. You know, remember, but you, when you are, when, they, when his fan and another fan talking, who's not his fan, what they gonna bring up? Yeah, it's just like a, a dude with a bad knee. It's a black eye. Yeah. A black eye go heal. But they'll always remember that black eye, especially on social media. Can you guys fix your guys' issues? Uh, I mean, probably not. I mean, I, I don't. I don't have an issue with them. I if I don't wake up thinking about you, if I don't, it's not an issue to me. I said what I said and I moved on. You know, if, if if you can't take it, it is what it is. But you know, I don't wake up thinking about no 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 people. That's when I got ops. I don't have ops. You know, I walk around freely, bro. You know, I walk around freely, and you know. You mentioned that you get a lot of love from everybody, from black, white, brown to the gangsters to the average dudes, you know, what do you think it is that, you know, that gets you that love from everybody? Just from being real. That's what it gives me. My music real. I'm real. You know, you got some people who music real, but they're not real. Mm. You know, people see this, this is, this is hard body, man. This is, this ain't no breaking. You know, this ain't no taking no money and changing this man. This ain't no, you know, I'm one of the few who people say, I think you keep it real. I say what millions of people want to say, but they don't have the nuts to say it. You know, I'm not trying to be somebody else. My music don't sound like other people. I'm boosted, man. I, man, I, you know, people, I stick out like a so thumb because I'm real. You know, I don't follow trends. What other people to do, I don't follow. I stick to what I believe in, my morals I stand on, and that make people love me. 
people know I done done all, I, I, you know, but I'm still happy. I'm a different gangster. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> it ain't too many people like Boosie. You know, I, I can make you smile. I can make you cry. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real person. I'm not putting on, I'm not walking around mugging everybody, you know, like, you know. I'm just a real person, I'm me. And, and, and that's what make a lot of people love me because it's too much for you to love, not to hate, for you to hate. If you hate Boosie, you got a problem. You got a serious problem because I'm just keeping it real, you know. Either I said something that really hurt you, because the truth hurts. I hurt a lot of people because of the truth. You know, I don't agree with a lot of things that go on in this world because that's not a part of what I stand for. And as a person, I have the right to say what I believe in and what I don't. A lot of people else in this world have the same right. But they don't have nuts. They don't have bowling ball nuts. You know, that's, you know, they always think what's gonna be taken from them from speaking their mind. And, you know, that's what makes Boosie Boosie Boosie. Boosie Boosie keeping it real for a lot of people who can't keep it real. You mentioned people not want to speak their mind because of what they might lose. Have you lost a lot from just speaking your mind and being authentic to who you are? Uh, I've lost, I've lost, I wouldn't say a lot, but I lost a lot of opportunities, you know, but gained them at the same time. You Did, know? Didn't you have a reality TV show you were working on that you lost yep, at one point? Yep, yep, yep. I lost that because they was uh, talking about the Dwayne Wade situation when I spoke on that. But everything happened for a reason. It wasn't meant for me to be on a reality TV. Most of the time, that's when your career doing this. <laughs> you know, you getting baby checks. You know, to put me on reality TV, you got to pay a ton of money. Because I'm going a, I'm to a break the number of game. I'm a damn fool. I'm going to act a damn fool. You pay me to get on reality TV. Whoever paid for this Boosie show? <laughs> I'm, I'm the, the show starting off, I'm on the toilet shitting. <laughs> you hear the turds dropping. Do, 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 do. What up, mother? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm ready to, but you know, that that wasn't the time. God do everything for a reason, man. God work in mysterious ways, you know. And I won't say I won't never ever be on reality TV, but I know that I can make, I can make a lot of money on reality TV. If somebody was to put that camera on me, man, and I just gotta be paid right. I mean, I, I mean, that's basically it. I'm booked every weekend, bro. Thursday to Sunday. What's gonna make you stop that? What's gonna make, what's gonna, gonna make, check. what's gonna make you stop that? It, it's, it's only gonna take two months. What's gonna make you stop? 16 shows a month. Mm. You got to you got to pay me, man. And when it comes to that a lot of people they try to look at me in a in a downward way as far as a CEO boss. Well, you never been on well why are you calling me like this? Why are y'all interested? You know, you got to pay me top dollar from what you didn't pay anybody else. Cuz the whole world is telling you they have to work, go in their DM and be like, where's the Boosie show? We won't see Boosie. You know what I'm saying? So I won't say I won't ever be on it. It's just, you know, you got to make me sit down and, and, I, and, I, and I'll act a damn fool. But I just got to be compensated. Right? Well, I'm looking forward to it, hopefully, at some point. It'll yeah. be something I... I know a lot of people will be tuning into. Yeah. For a fact. Yeah. I came across this video, this uh this viral story, and you did a feature with the guy. I believe his name was name was uh D A and he had a Boosie impersonator in the music video. 
Uh, I think so in Minneapolis somewhere. I'm not sure of the place. Oh nah, it was on social media. Yeah, yeah, uh, it went. The clip of it went viral. Nah, I don't know what that was, bro. Did you see it? Let me see it. I think I saw it. I think it was on the blog. That's me rapping, and I think it's some dude under me. Right. Yeah. yeah. With a flat top like my shit. I think I saw it. <laughs> yeah, the dude, he they they tried to have a a, fade, a boosie fade going on. There it is. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. So what what happened with that? They didn't... I don't know, man. I mean, I saw it just like you, actually. I mean, that's a that's a, that's a a song I did. I don't know if I did it with that dude, and he put that under there. I don't know if it was just some shit they put together to go viral, but I had no idea of it at all. I mean... They never reached out to you to do no. a music video or nothing. No. Damn. And you know, you, do you remember doing the song? I remember the verse, but it was at a time when I was doing all these verses. I had a special going or whatever. And I don't remember the artist I did it with. You know, I just knew that was me rapping, and that wasn't me on the video. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, these mother <laughs> going too far. <laughs> it was funny. As when I saw it, though. They didn't have the money to get Boosie to do the video. That's what it looked like to me. I don't, I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. Like, they knew that shit wouldn't go slide. How can you think <laughs> somebody go think that's Boosie? Like, get the f out of here, bro. Like, get the f out of here. Yeah, that was crazy, man. We talked, we touched on this a little bit, you know, BG just did 13 years, man, and he uh, got out. He's been grinding. Going yeah. hard ever since, man. Uh, you guys mentioned the album, but about a little longer than a month ago, you had some words for WAC 100. Yeah, yeah. Over some paperwork that dropped on Christmas Day. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, basically, BG had a fall partner. You know, everybody have fall partners. You know, everybody have fall partners who take licks. You know, you know what a fall partner is. Yeah, yeah. Nigga who ain't got no charges, who who take who take the lick, you know. So, Wax says something. You know, I, I value my friendship with a lot of people, you know, and uh, that's one of the dudes I stand up for, BG, you know. But uh, me and back Wax went back and forth in the DM and shit. <laughs> it ain't nothing. Okay. Now, so so you got you didn't take the thing with whack too personal. Um, uh, uh, not really. I mean, when he got to talking about, you know, he was gonna do me something when he see me and all that. You know, I DM'd him right there, like you know, I ain't gonna go as far as what we talked about in the DM. Just you know, just me telling him, you know. You think you say you like that? I'm like that. Bro. Like that was basically it, you know. How do you feel about all the paperwork that's continuously coming out about rappers? It's like a it's the past year or two. It's just been kind of crazy. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to come out if if if, if you're getting down. It's supposed to come out, you know. Ain't no paperwork on Boost. No paperwork. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Immaculate. You know, I sit on death row for not telling. How many rappers gonna sit on death row? Not too many. Not too many people in general. How many people gonna how, how many people gonna sit on death row and you could tell on somebody who not doing nothing for you while you in there? Could have got out. Easy. Easy. Mm. Told me you got me fed up. I'll f your daughter. I seen a post. Are you getting married? 
Is that is that true or I couldn't really find it? I couldn't dig it all the way up. It's, it's, it's part of my court case. I can't really talk about it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had went to court and I was letting the judge know some stuff that was going on. And my lawyer don't really want me to talk about my court case and, and things like that. Or things that got something to do with my court case. Because I'm, fight, I'm fighting a fair charge right now. Yeah, I'm fighting a, um, I'm fighting a um, possession of firearm by a convicted fella. Yeah, yeah, that's, in that's... San Diego. <laughs> but I'm good, man. I got God on my side, man. You know, I don't. I mean, I'm good. I got God on my side, man. I mean, I got a I got a pretty good judge, a fair judge. And that's big, man. I always had a bad judge. Bad judge. They all been had bad judges who just got sentenced to 10 years for third offense marijuana. Bro. Damn. 14 grams, 21 grams, and 18 grams. Never was off of rehab, bro. All my, all my, all my convictions are drug charges. Never was off of rehab, not one time. 10 years, third offense marijuana, grams, son, straight to penitentiary. Damn. Damn, man, that's, they can do that? They, they, the laws are that strict in Louisiana? Hell yeah. Damn. Different, bro. It's different, bro. It's, it's different. If I was in California, I would have never been a convicted felon, bro. If I was in another state, I would would have never been a convicted felon. Bro. Yeah, Cali's pretty lean on with the marijuana, but a lot of states are lean with the marijuana. A lot of states who not lean with they are they are leaning with helping somebody, giving them help, rehab. Boosie couldn't get it. Did they say why you couldn't get it? I just told you, Boosie. Mm. If somebody gets caught with grams, you got people who've been caught with heroin, all kind of shit, and got help. Dope addicts, all kind of. I was an addict for years. Marijuana, codeine. I was never given help, bro. Never offered help. Only thing I was offered is the penitentiary or trial. That's why I left Louisiana. Bro. Well, they were on you too, right? I think I, I read about that before or, or seen an interview. Didn't they take some money from you too at some point? Yeah, or? I was going through all kind of stuff with law enforcement down there, bro. I was, you know, I was a big shot, man. You know, I was, <laughs> was doing my thing, bro. I was, they were seeing something that they never seen before. You know, and I wouldn't help in my situation, you know, I'm young, stupid, rapping about the DAs, stupid ass shit, like shit I'd never do again. So that ain't helped me, you know. I ain't make it good on myself neither, I'm gonna say that also, but I was, I was, I felt I was done wrong also by, you know, by a lot of, a lot of law enforcement and, and, and Public official. Man, damn. But I mean, uh, are things better in Atlanta? Oh, yeah. You? Yeah. Because yeah. I do see you get pulled over quite a bit. That's in country towns. Not in Atlanta, Georgia. I live, I live some I live way in the country, but in Atlanta, Georgia, man, sweet, bro. Like, police, I, I, I wouldn't say love, but they like me, bro. Like they, they like me, bro. Like it, they want to see me win, bro. I've been arrested over twenty, thirty, sometimes in in Louisiana. Bro. You know, been arrested in Georgia one time. Mm, okay, yeah, that's like, a big in, difference. In nine years, one time, bro. And they've been pulled over plenty of times. 
if I get pulled over in Louisiana, it could be a, it can be, it can be a, it can be a, a some crumbs. I'm gone, bro. Like, I got arrested one time for watching a flick in my car, man. Arrested? Not even a ticket? Arrested. Got to make bail. Damn. Me and my boy for watching a flick in my car. How often do you return home? Uh, for Boosie Bash. I got my Boosie Bash coming up March 16th. Every year I do it March 16th on my mama's birthday. And uh, that's the only time I really go home, man. You know, uh, that's the only time I really go home. I believe in the quote I started, you know, most rappers die in their own city. And I just believe in that, bro. I mean, it ain't worth it, bro. It's not worth it, man. I mean, I always love that city. That's where all my stories come from. That's where my music come from. That's where most of it come from. So, uh, but, you know, even though the, now the police down there, it ain't what it used to be. I mean, it's a different mayor. It's a different set of people. But uh, it's just not no place I feel like I would want to be, you know. I would want to lay my head at, you know. I got a lot of, I got a lot of things that can happen out there. So much stuff since I was a kid. I've been in the rap game since '98, bro. Heavy in the streets, like, so. You know, I want. I like to put that behind me. I like to be in Atlanta living life. I mean, now, now I got to look over my shoulder. And I got to look over my boy's shoulder. You know, I always got to protect ourselves, but it's a difference. You know, uh, I'm from a city where they got crabs in a bucket, bro. The bigger you are, somebody always trying to pull you down. You know, and uh, I basically got tired of that, bro. I, I got tired of people just trying to pull me down for no reason, man. I mean, I never, I never was the type to start nothing with anybody. There's so many people. When you come from a small town, they try to pull you down, man. They, they don't want you big, bro. They like, you know, most people. Instead of out rapping you, will kill you to get on. You know, you be the one. Now it's a, it's a new hustle now. You kill the biggest rapper, a rapper. Now you the biggest. Now everybody know your name. Now you finna start rapping. And I see that in so many cities, you know. Uh, the beef be right in the city. That's why all the murder shit happen when the beef right in the city. People who beefing. He in Miami and he in Arkansas or something, they don't really kill each other. Because they don't have the money to honey, they have the money to hunt each other. But niggas ain't going to drive 13 hours on the road. Guns, woo doo woo, gotta go. That shit is on movies. You know, you see the biggest rappers getting to it, but you don't see them sending people at each other. You know? It's it's di it's a difference when you six hundred miles away, you know. Niggas ain't really on that cartel shit like, like that. you know. From what I see and what I what I done been through, you know, the dudes who who get away, they usually live longer. Bro. Yeah. I definitely see a lot of rappers move out of their hometown. Just it's just. Life is probably a lot easier in a lot of different ways. You know, besides yeah. just the beef. You know, yeah. You mentioned, you know, being killed in your own city, man. Well, maybe three years ago or so, Duck was killed in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, recently uh, six dudes were found guilty of his murder. Right. I don't know if you've seen the video, but there was a... Yeah, I saw that. A leaked video. You know, what what'd you think about the whole thing? I don't know if you followed it at all. Uh I didn't follow the trial. I just saw uh the videos when it went on uh social media or whatever, but I didn't follow the trial, I mean 
it didn't make me a difference. Of, you know, I didn't follow the trial, nothing like that. I mean, I ain't have no no dealings with either side. You know, I just was just like everybody else looking at the thing. You know, uh, yeah, I was just. I was just like, you know, I was just looking, bro. I mean. Yeah, I, you know, I, I cover a lot of the drill scene. So, I, you know, I was tapped into the whole thing, man. You know, you know, it was it was a pretty wild trial, man. You know, they had witnesses and, you know, they had videotape, you know, which was part of that too, man. Um, the videotape, like the four slides that they showed, that was all on social media. They had longer versions. Uh, if you go on YouTube, you can see, you know, what allegedly, you know, the dudes getting in their car, uh, leaving Old Block. You know, they got video of them on different streets, you know, what oh, I'm saying? Okay. going to downtown. They okay. Got, they got video of them leaving, you know, go, you know, coming back to Old Block and everything. Okay. Yeah. The video footage wasn't really that good, though. I couldn't really tell who it was. Yeah. You know. But you know how them jurors be. They be on common sense. It's a lot of a lot of jurors be on common sense. But, but uh, I used to like that song, Duckhead. If you won't slide, motherfucker, then slide. <laughs> but I was telling my boy, uh, When I when I when I first saw him made that song about all those people, I was like, man, they gonna they gonna try to get dude, bro. Like, I said it, bro. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I said it, I said it to my boy K. I was like, man, I don't know, <laughs> like you know, like, cause I knew if if somebody would have did that in my city in Baton Rouge, it was over for him. It was over for him because it's so many people could be wanting your head. And then once you blowing up, like I said, they want to, they want to take down that motherfucker blowing up. They won't get you before you get on that on top of that mountain. You know, so I ain't feel good for his safety when I heard that song, you know. Yeah, man. Uh Cause it was all over the blog. It was like he dissed the whole Chicago. I was like, damn. A lot of people want a duck to leave Chicago, you know, but. Yeah, you gotta get out there, bro. Like, I I tell, bro, I told J. Day Youngin, bro, I told, I ain't told a lot of people who ain't make it, bro, to, you know, get out your city, you know. I just told Big Boogie, man, get the fuck, nigga, what the, what the, what the fuck you want, don't go back down now. Just told Big Boogie, you know, like, they gonna kill you, nigga. Niggas, niggas. Your daughter needs you, nigga. I just texted him. I told him, bro. After Juke got killed, bro, you know. Juke with my partner, bro. I told him, I'm like, bro, nigga. Nigga, 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 you a, nigga, you a trophy. You know, like, get it, nigga. Once you made it out, you don't really need to go back unless it's a, it's an emergency. And you gotta be ready when you go back, bro. You gotta be ready when you go back, bro. You go to your hometown, bro. You got the nigga who was in class with you who ain't never like you. You got the police who you bullied in school. He a police, he a narcotic now. He ready to f over you too. He put something in your car. You know, you got the bitch who you ain't been talking to you since you blowed up with the good she'll set you up. You know, it's, it's, it's a web. It's a web. You got the little nigga who just say, I won't be the little nigga who shoot at him and get the stripes of I'm the new shoot. I slang iron. You know, if you was heavy in the streets, anybody you did something to, they got people now. They coming up. They didn't got their ranks in the game. They coming up. So now they won't bust you down too. So, you know, it's it's a lose-lose situation, you know, going back to your city after you done came up, you know, it's a lose. Uh, you mentioned 
Big Jook, man. Uh, you know, what was your thoughts or, you know, what was the first thing you thought when you heard about the news? Uh, I had just talked to Jook probably about three weeks before that. He was hollering at some guys wanted a feature in California. And uh, I don't know, man. I just I just shook my head, man. You know, I thought about Gotti, you know. I text Gotti, you know, just... I ain't really know what to tell him, man. I mean, I ain't really know what to tell Gotti, bro, you know. Because I know that pain of losing somebody that close to you, you know. So, I mean, I ain't... I just shook my head, man. I mean, when it's a wall, it's a wall, you know. When it's when it's up, it's stuck, you know. And just how they go. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that, man. Well, Birdman made some news recently. He says the South doesn't get enough credit in the industry. What do you think? Is that you agree with that? I think the South gets a lot of credit. I thought that was just my personal thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's more people talked about in the South than a lot of people right now. I mean, probably the CEOs don't get enough credit. You know, we got we got Baby, we got JD, we got J Prince, Master P. I mean, I feel like they might not get enough credit for what they did in hip hop. Because without the South, it wouldn't be hip hop. All the print we didn't put in the fucking concrete, it wouldn't be hip hop. It wouldn't be, this shit, it'll be watered down, bro. It'll be basic. What the South did, if you take out all the South artists and CEOs of the game and the music, where would it be? And he's right. But as far as the younger generation, I feel like they getting their props. I mean, all the youngsters who, I feel like the South done made a footprint. But I also feel like the older generation don't get the props that they should get. But Scarface. the bigger names in the, yeah. The bigger names in the South, the younger generation, they they getting they they getting they they getting they they getting they love, but as a whole, we still try to make it like the South ain't what it is. But I feel in my heart and that nobody has put out more better music and hip hop than the South. I feel like. If you take the South out of hip hop, it wouldn't stand as strong. If you take anybody else out of hip hop, that's how I feel about the South. You talking about, man, bro, we talking about real legends, bro. Real legends. I can go on and on, man. I mean, we talking about, talking about real legends, bro. And, you know, it always been harder for the South, bro. It always been harder, bro. That's how I feel. It was, it was, well, that's how we looked at it. I'm gonna say it like that. We always looked at it like the East and the West had a bit, you had a better chance of making it if you was on the East or the West Coast. That's how we always looked at it, being from them small towns down there. There's less connections, there's less, but uh, I feel a younger generation like now, so many young artists who come from the South and they getting their flowers. It ain't like it used to be where they getting their flowers. So I agree to disagree. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Joe Budden, but speaking of the South and the young dudes, Joe Budden went viral for saying young boys music is trash. What do you think? When you heard that, uh, I 
I don't really want to comment on that shit. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to comment on that shit. Me and YB got an understanding on on some shit right now. You know, I ain't speaking on him. He ain't speaking on me. We ain't really talking in that, but you know, I don't want to talk about him. He don't want to talk about me. You know, keep it like that. Okay. Cat Williams broke the internet. Crazy. 50 something million views on his interview. Yeah. Crazy numbers. I seen he gave you, I believe it was in the Vlad interview, $15,000 right when you got out of jail. Yeah. Did you guys know each other at all or? Nah, nah, I didn't know him. I mean, I was a fan of him, but I ain't know him. I came home, I was home about three weeks and uh, he called me, he got in touch with my people and said, you know, he wanted me to come to his show. He got me front row tickets, man. And brought me backstage in his dressing room. Funny as stand up, bro. Killed it, bro. I want, they wanted him to do it. Another one the next day. And when I was leaving, uh he had a towel and it was wrapped and it was wrapped with rubber bands around it. And I thought it was weed. Because he threw it in the car and he just left. Say, huh, boosting, threw it in the car and just went up the stairs, gone. When I was pulling off to leave. And uh I wasn't smoking at the time, so I'm like, I got some weed for y'all. I unwrapped, excuse me, I unwrapped the, uh, I unwrapped the, uh, the rubber bands and it was $15,000 cash, bro. Yeah, bro, real shit, bro. I ain't even get a chance to go, I was in traffic, I, I couldn't even tell him thank you, it was just, it was, it was, you know, he helped me rent a home for a couple months, man. I'll never forget that, bro. Like, had so many people, artists, everybody across the world hollering free boosted, but when I came home, I ain't give me nothing, you know. So he was like the only person to really help you out in that that type of way. One of the few. One of the few. One of the few. I, I've heard he's like that. Bro, he gave me fifteen thousand. I didn't even know you. Invited me to his show front row seats brought me in the back vip bro like dude got a good heart bro dude got a good heart bro like what do you think about the interview um i mean i thought what everybody else thought <laughs> this nigga here breaking the internet <laughs> He, hey, he he was talking some shit, man, and uh, you know. Uh, well, he said he turned down fifty million four times to protect his integrity and his virgin hole. How often, or you know, what I'm saying, what do you think about that type of stuff? I can't um, believe that because as you see, if he give me fifteen thousand money, is not money is not important to everybody. Some people, money money is not the world to them. Some people not gonna sell their soul for money. You know, they've been trying to do this with a, with a lot of with a lot of people, bro. With a lot of people in Hollywood, you know, but a lot of people wasn't going for it, bro. Like Bernie Mac wasn't going for it. You know, they got a lot of people wasn't going for it, bro. And a lot of people stand on their morals. You know, fifty million to do something that's gonna torture you inside and and torture your career later on. Some people would rather have 10 good million than 50 or 20. Cause most things you can buy with 50 million, you can buy with 20 million or 10 million. Cause you have the credit to get everything free anyway. You know, that's what people, people don't have morals. Money makes people throw away their morals for what they stand for. If money makes you do that, then you're, you, can, you can't be trusted. 
you can't be trusted. If somebody makes you do something for three million, for 30 million, you will call your best friend and set him up and get his brains blown out. If three million made you do something that categorizes your whole identity, everything you have been through, everything you have been through, you're ready to throw it away for three million. If that same person says, I got 50 million, set your boy up for me. Ain't nobody gonna know who did it. I think you'll do that. You do something for five, six million. If somebody come with 500 million and jump in the passenger seat of your car and tell you, hey, suck that, I'm gonna wire you up 500 million. You think he ain't gonna do it? Ain't nobody in that car. I'm gonna wire you to your account, 300 million. Put this in your ass. We now. Those are the people can't be trusted. When money makes you do things that gives, tears away everything you thought of, something that you know you, that you go against, then you are, you, you are nothing. You are not a man. You will cross your family. You will cross your children. You will do, any, you will cross your children for money. And that makes you not a man to me. A lot of people might want to agree with me, but to me, those people who do all this stuff just because money, what would you really do for some real money? Mm. If you steal 200,000, you were ki you were killed for 20 million. If you steal from your boy 200,000 for 20 million, if he's counted in your face and y'all together, you will blow his brains out from the back when he turned his head and grabbed that 20 million. That's how I feel. And this is facts. It didn't happen in daily, daily life in the hood. Not on TV, in the hood, it didn't happen. What about the whole, you know, he brought up, you know, black men wearing dresses. Yeah. You know, what's your take on that? Uh... I mean, some people just, I mean, that was a, that was a, I was like, it's either some people going to stand up for what they say, or some people just going to look at it like it's acting, you know? You got some people who going to stand up for what and how they was raised and what they believe in. You know, some people is not going to put on no dress as a man. You know, some people wasn't even raised that way. You know, some people was raised to be actors and to entertain and, and they never look like it's no gangsters in their families, no people who stick to the code in their family. So I feel like those are the one who you know, have no problem with wearing dresses because that's not their lifestyle. That's not keeping it a hundred and being, no, that's not their lifestyle. It's acting. Then you have this, these people over here who stands on what they were raised on. That's why a lot of people like my, what I, what I say and a lot of people dislike it because they don't know my struggle. They don't know how I was raised. They don't know what we live by, where I'm from. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's starting to get to you? No, no, I hear you. You have two different people. You have the Mark, you have the, the Waynes. He was raised in living color. You know, they've been acting. This is, this is acting to them. Then you got the, the Bernie Max from Chicago. 
the trenches. You got all these other comedians who was around all this other shit. And, 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 and that was the one, one of the worst things that you could ever do as a man. And they feel inside that just because I got this job, that's not going to make me do something that I don't believe in. And us as a, as a world, we have to respect that. The same way we got to respect, you know, that they don't live by the same thing we live by. You know, but I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel both sides, but... You know, we we as we as a a stand up community, we not we not putting on dresses. We not doing things that women do. That's what's wrong with the world now. Everybody won't do shit that women do. Women got enough struggles and problems right now against each other on social media. You got enough. They going against each other. Why try to do what the fuck the women do? That's what I, that's what I, let the women shine. That's what's wrong with the, all these niggas and the women ain't saying shit. The women got to tell them, nigga, you look like a bitch. If all the bad bitches get to talk, boy, you look like a hoe. You think you mean? It'll stop. Because we care about what? What a woman thinks and what a woman says. If they start going on to all these, boy, you is a bitch. You think you finer than me? You think your hair look like mine? Why the fuck you got on that? I just saw what you call him with a thing on with his ass out Cleo. What his name? Cardi, uh, what his name? Was it Playboy Cardi? With a thing out with a with a thing going in his ass. See through. Oh, I know, I seen that too. If all the motherfucking women in the game start saying, boy, you look like a bitch. To all the stuff that people are doing like women from they toes to all this shit, they would stop. Because as a man, who you impressing? The women. The women gotta stop being quiet. You know? Cause what we do, we do this, we look good to impress the woman. You know, if the women start speaking on it and stop being quiet, they would cool it down. If they don't, they just like, but they will cool it down. The women are quiet. The women are quiet. They ain't saying nothing about how these, these men are looking and they not say they quiet. The biggest women in the game, they're quiet. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I, I have no idea. Maybe they getting something out of them. Maybe it's the money. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe they don't want the, most of the men who looking like that not to support them. Where's the women boosters? Who gonna speak they mind? You look like a bitch. Nigga, you might as well get sweetie nails. You know, if, if the women start going at these niggas, it'll calm down, bro. It will calm down. Because everything we do, we do it for the, a woman. A man and a woman is a connection. Everything we do, we do. If we put on clothes to look good for a woman. And the women are quiet, bro. I hear that. I hear that. Well... Omar Johnson recently went viral for saying Eminem can't be a goat because he's white. What do you think? Is that something you would agree with or disagree uh, with? I mean, where I'm from, we don't listen to Eminem. You know, I'm from the trenches. I never heard nobody come in my project playing Eminem. I'm going to keep it real. You know. When I hear him, I say, he can rap. I always say that. Every time I hear Slim Shady, I used to like that song, Slim Shady, but where I'm from, 
I've never heard one song in my project. I never heard Eminem not one time in the speakers in my project. I got to be honest. None of my friends never said put Eminem on. Play that new Eminem. You know, I only saw it on MTV, you know, TV. You know, uh, everybody have their greats. If you put 10 people lined up on this couch, everybody gonna tell you five different greats. You know, and everybody look at it in a, some people look at it as rapping. Some people look at it as all kind of stuff, you know. I never, I was always biased, bro. Like, I didn't even look at people like they were good if I felt they wouldn't live in the life. I'm a street dude. You know, I used to always look down on people who, you know, and it's sad to say to this day, but I used to look down on people who I knew wouldn't really live in that life. You know, uh, but uh, like I said, you know, everybody have their different greats. You're going to have some people say Eminem, top five. You're going to have some people say he's not, you know, because everybody, music touch you in a different way. Eminem music then touched a lot of people. DMX music then touched a lot of people. DMX is in my top five. Cause I always felt listening to his music that he that he really lived that and it was heard. Even though I wasn't from New York, my street niggas still saluted him and played his music. I heard him in the hood. You know, uh, and I can't look at put people in my put people in my top if I never knew their music. If I only listened to a couple songs and saw a couple videos, you have to really touch me for me to feel like, feel your greatness. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's a difference, bro. You gotta really be able to get in tune with that artist. You know, I was just like a, I hear Eminem, I'll be like, okay. I like that song, you know, but I never went bought a CD. I never, you know, stood out the store when CDs was to buy an Eminem CD. Tupac, I did that. You know, Scarface, I done did that. Pimp C, Bun B, I done did that. You know, those, those were artists, Juvenile, you know, those were artists who I, you know, I, I was in tune with, you know. I, I can put on their album and rap nine, ten songs. You mentioned your top five. Who is Boosie's top five? Um, Boosie. <laughs> Boosie, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Tupac, DMX. Uh, Juvenile. Juvenile always been my, like, I know every jam, every Jewish CD, <laughs> almost. Um, that's four. Four, yep. I don't know who five, bro. That five spot needs substitution, you know? Yeah. We, got the, we got the Mount Rushmore, though, for sure. Top yeah. four. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, you mentioned Tupac. I think I've seen you touch on Tupac a few times, man. You know, can you kind of go into, you know, his inspiration and, you know, kind of what he meant to you as an artist? Uh, Tupac was everything to me, bro. Like, you know, he's my favorite actor, my favorite rapper, my favorite person. I mean... He wasn't scared, bro. He wasn't scared, to, you know. He wasn't scared to speak his mind, bro, you know. And he was, as the time go by, as I learned his, hearing from all the stories, he was like me. He was similar to me in a lot of ways, like, as far as being a friend. 
I'm like that, you know, when something go down, I don't care how big I am, I'm I'm fighting too. You know, like my boy out there, I'm kicking too, you know. Just a just a real friendship, the way he work in the studio, you know. And I never I never knew that till later in life. And I always had that work ethic, but I looked up to Tupac, bro, and, and um, when he died, I was 13, and you know, at, at that time, that's when you a real fan of 13 and 14, that's when you like... Music is everything. Music is everything, bro, so yeah. I lost him at a time when, uh, you know, that's when you a real fan of somebody, like that, that, that age, 13 or 17, like you crazy about artists, and uh, I mean, he was just everything to me. Everybody knew it, you know. What I mean, all my everybody knew how much I loved Tupac all through the hood. Yeah, I remember he died. Uh, is every time I got shot, he got shot. I thought he would live. I probably thought he was immortal or some shit. I don't know. I mean, even when he got shot the last time, uh, I thought he was gonna live. live. I was dribbling a basketball under the bridge, walking from uh, Sports Academy. And uh, dude passed on me in the car and rolled down the window and said, Boosie, your boy Tupac just died. And uh, i never forget it was like yesterday, man. I, I picked up the ball and I, and I jogged all the way home to try to go see the news. I jogged all the way home, crying, you know. Damn. You loved Tupac so much that you hated Big and Puff at the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I felt like they was my ops at the time. You know, cause I'm, I'm a kid, bro. You know, I know they beefing. I didn't know nothing. All, all I'm thinking is Puff did it, Big did it, Big shot. You know, I didn't, I'm a kid, I'm 13 years old. This a this a this a five year run of nothing but Tupac nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. You know you know how kids be. You don't be knowing what the f be going on. You know if he don't like you, I don't like you. I don't care who you are. It's a real fan, bro. You know like the fans get on thing and be the, the fans do it today. Just the beehives and the Nicki Minaj fans like we ain't gotta know what the story is. Don't f with him. Don't f with her. Like I'm against you, and that's how I was with Tupac, man. I mean, everybody he disliked, I disliked. Keefe D. After over 25 years, they arrest Keefe D. For his part in the murder of Tupac. Yeah. You know what was your reaction? You know what did you feel about that? Oh, I ain't feel nothing about it, man. I mean. I ain't feel nothing about it, you know. I don't wish jail on no Keefe D. <laughs> I don't wish jail on no Keefe D, bro. Like, you know, I ain't, I ain't feel no way about it, man. You know, over the years I got to understand the situation after they got to talking about it, and you know, I, when stuff happened, like I always say, that's how the game go, bro. That's a that's how the game go, you know, Pac. Pogum just, you know, put their hands on the real stepper, you know. You know, once you, I know how that go in the streets. And I know it's even better when a rapper do it. If a rapper stump down a, a real gangster, it's gonna be blood behind that, bro. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about, it's not gonna stop till there's blood behind that. Because if a street do it, Street dude do it, it's gonna be blood behind it, but when a rap dude, when a rapper do it, it's, 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 it's 10 times worse. Because real gangsters don't look at rappers like gangsters. So uh, when I f finally found out all the situation over the years, and it was just, it was just, you know, uh, you know, Pac just being a friend, bro. That's all he doing, bro. Just yeah, okay. There you go right there. Okay. 
That's a real friend from the heart. He just, he just, it's the wrong dude, you know. You see, you think Orlando was maybe like embarrassed or, you know, felt like, damn, I can't, I can't get beat, I can't get beat up by a rapper. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You're not going for that. that no, no street nigga ain't going. For, it gonna happen that night. Something gonna happen that night if it's a rapper, bro. Something gonna happen that night if it's a rapper. And this from this from street experience, bro. Like it's ain't nothing sliding about that, bro. Ain't nothing gonna slide about that, bro. Like you know, uh, if you can do it to a regular street dude, it feels better doing it to a rapper. Mm. I'm talking from a from a real street nigga mind. You know, uh, and you know this rap ain't done what you done done in this street. You know this rap ain't got the respect you done got in this street. You know what's gonna come from this, what people gonna be talking about. After this is done, and this happened before social media, how bad you think it is now to get a black eye? Why you think the murder's so bad now? People not taking ass whoopings, bro. Cause, you, Cause people gonna go on social media and talk about it. You know, so it was just, it was just Pac being a friend, I feel like, you know, and, uh, and Orlando being a being a gangster, you know. I seen the headline. I didn't know if this was true or not, or you know, I just thought I thought I'd ask you about it, man. Are you and Webby working on the album? Yep, 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 yep. So you got we one with BG coming? I got one with, one with Webby? Webby coming, I got one with BG coming, I got one with Daz Dillinger coming. We what? ten songs in. I got one with uh my Russian producer. It's called uh it's called my Russian Alliance. I got one called My Russian Alliance with my Russian producer, Steery. I got my blues album coming in a couple weeks, meaning a couple months. So, man, I'm, I'm going to drop an album every month this year. Daz, that caught me off guard. Yeah. I didn't and, see that one coming. Bro, me and Daz got a classic, bro. When I say a classic, we nine songs in, and, and me and Daz got a classic. That's what's up, man. That's yeah. uh yeah. That that uh you I mean you guys got completely different styles. Yeah. So it's, but... it's gonna be uh interesting to I want you know, interesting to hear these how you guys bring the hardcore West Coast with the down south together. Wait till you hear it. Yeah. You're gonna be like, This shit should win a Grammy. Like this shit is it's different, bro. I seen recently the uh, you tweet about this that you walked out of this color purple movie. Yeah. Over some of the scenes that were in there? Yeah. Can you talk about that a little? Uh, I just basically was at the movies with my daughter and uh, my, my daughter and my stepdaughter, her, her big sister. And uh, it was just too much, you know. I don't, I don't want my daughter seeing that. And I have a right as a parent, you know. Uh, and it was it was kind of stretched, you know. It was people were talking about it just a kiss. No, it was more than a kiss. It was a it was a real relationship. It was different from the first one. I feel they were going to the movies. They were it was just you know. And then when they kissed, my my stepdaughter say ugh. So I'm like, it's time to go. You know, I have a right as a as a parent. A lot of people, I have a right as a parent. You know, uh, I believe in traditional households. You know, man and woman. You know, I'm not not raising my kids to to be that way. If they get that way when they're grown and things like that, that's their decision. But as parents, we have the right to raise our kids the way we want to raise our kids. It's the same position if you want to have your kid with a gun in his hand or you don't. You have a right to, as a parent, to make that decision. You want your kid to be this and that, you have a right as a parent. And I have a right as a parent to say, we walking out this mother. You know, I felt like, you know, I just felt it was a, 
It was a lesbian love story, you know? Do you feel like more movies and more TV shows are having more You feel like, like that, that too. I can tell how you look. You feel it. It's the, every, every, the 20 minutes of, first, of every movie. It's the first 20 minutes of every movie. It's pushed. A lot of people not gonna say, but it, the first 20 minutes of every movie is pushed. You don't see bitches getting banged from the back no more. Man and a woman tongue kissing as soon as it come on. You don't see that no more. You don't see that no more. If you're lying, you gotta go to Tubi. You wanna see a bitch take some, you gotta go to Tubi. I mean, it's pushed, man. It's, it's pushed. It's, it's pushed. I've seen you touch on this a little bit in the past, but uh, are your daughter? Yeah. Is, is a lesbian? Yeah. Uh, how did that affect you or, you know? It didn't, it didn't really that? affect me because she made the choice when she was grown. And I love her to death. I mean, it didn't, it didn't make me hate her. It didn't make me feel any kind of way about, you know, that's my first child. That's my heart. She's 22, 23 years old. At that time, you know what you want to be. I mean, my daughter is like this. So how can anybody in this world say that I hate the LBGTs? What, I think I'm saying it right. Like, how can it, you can't say that? You just don't agree what they're pushing on our kids. And I have the right to try to raise my kids to not go that way. I'm a Southern Baptist. We was raised on traditional households. And I'm up against a fight in this world. We as parents, if you're trying to make a traditional household, and have your baby have grandparents, I mean, grandbabies the right way, we are up against a fight. If we don't help our kids, it's a fight. They mind will be swayed from what this world is pushing. If you be quiet and don't say nothing, this world, this world will Grab your, grab, grab, grab them. I seen you tweet about Mo3 recently. Yeah. One of the hardest to do it, man. Uh, yeah. Can you kind of talk about your guys' relationship and you know, how'd you guys link up and everything? Uh, me and Mo3 linked up like when I came home from prison. Uh, I was his favorite rapper. Um, uh, I went there to show in, uh, Jack, I mean, Dallas. And it was like Boosie was doing a show in Dallas. Every word, every word. And, and I knew right then that he was special. And after that, we just kind of became friends, bro. I was, you know, I was, I was speaking high level. You know, I was, everybody thought he was signed to me because I was showing him so much love because I know talent. I know greatness, bro. Like he can do it all, bro. Like sing, rap. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, I miss him, bro. You know, I miss him. Uh, we put out a classic album together. I'm grateful we had the time to do that. But uh, Mo Three was special, bro. They took a real talent, bro. Mo Three would be so damn big right now, man. He would, sky's the limit if, it, if Mo Three was here right now. Mo3 will have $50 million easy, bro. Like, he, would be a, he, he would be a big shot, bro. You couldn't deny his talent, bro. Like, yeah, he, he got a gift, bro. He had a gift, it's just, and I told him, bro. I told him, get the fuck out that city, bro. I told him, I told him, bro, you know. I told him. When I interviewed him, yeah, he said you were the only artist that could compare to Tupac. What do you think about all the rappers that compare themselves to Tupac? Boosie, the only one. Boosie, the only one can say. Only one can compare himself. 
Boosie's the only one. He's the only one in comparison to Tupac. Yeah. He just spoke real, real highly of me, man. Um, yeah. You know, he was a cool dude. You know, the interview we did was dope. Dope interview. Song for song, bro, nobody has a really can touch me on, on F4 catalog. Mixtapes, albums. It's similar to Pac, bro. Like, you know, Pac just ain't have time to do it, but I'm the closest thing, bro, as far as music. You don't have to fast forward every song you will listen to. Like, nobody, nobody's with me really with a catalog like mine, bro. Like, I'm telling you, bro. Like, I don't get my flowers I should get, but. The real ones, they give me my flowers, bro. The people who I raised, and they give me my flowers, you know. Just a lot of them gone, bro. Mo3, Trouble, you know, a lot of them gone. Why don't you think you get the flowers you, des you deserve? I don't know. They probably think I'm going to throw it back in their face. <laughs> <laughs> if they do something that Boosie don't like. <laughs> But uh, I don't know, man. You know, there's a lot of people say you don't, you don't, you don't get your flowers till you can't smell them no more. Mm. You know, a lot of people become great when they gone. A lot of people don't see the big picture until you out the picture. You know, and uh, I give my own self my flowers, bro. You know, I, I give my own self my flowers, you know. Uh, saying that to say, you know, I just... Look, you know, like, yeah, nigga, y'all can't, nigga ain't with me. <laughs> like, you know, uh, I'm legendary, bro, and I know it, and can't nobody take that away from me. I don't care what they say, what I say. My music is undeniable. I mean, I feel I'm, you know, definitely top five. Well, when you went back there after he passed away, you went over there and you got shot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I guess you just woke up in the hospital? What What all, you know, you were just there, man, just to, you know, kind of celebrate Mo3 and you ended up Yeah, I just, I just was going to pay my respects, you know, pay my respects because that was my real friend and I, and I didn't get shot. When you get shot, you don't talk about it. You just wake up in the hospital. The wind shot me. <laughs> it was windy that day. It was, it was in okay. November. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, how bad was the shot? Because I believe I seen that you, you know, you had a few complications with it going forward. Yeah, I mean, still got iron in my leg, bro. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. It blew my kneecap out. No oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. With big, the big bullet then, I take it, probably. Yeah, 45. Damn. Is that your only time ever being shot? Uh, Yeah, yeah. I've been shot at like seven times, but that's my only time being hit. Yeah. Were there any of those times where you thought like, damn, this is over? Oh, it was God every time, bro. I got sprayed one time coming from my baby mama house. I think I was like 18 then. They pulled right on side of the car and switched cheese that mother. The bullet straight through the window. The bullet straight through the window, bro. Like on my side, straight through the window. I don't remember. I mean, and I didn't get hit. Another time, nigga caught me on the interstate. Swiss cheese the whole car. Ain't no bullet touching me. Yeah. Damn, that's that's crazy. Like all yeah. them bullets, like. Yeah, 50, four people in the car, bullets. nobody got hit. Four people in the car. Yeah, the first time, three people in the car, nobody got hit. God, man. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Damn, that's a lot of bullets for nobody to get hit, man. Mm. Wow, that's crazy. Glass in my mouth, everything. Damn. Yeah. I seen you were going to work with King Von. Uh... I mean, I met King Von the night he died. You met him the night he died? Yeah, the day he died. Damn. I met him that day in, in sex. I met him that day in sex, yeah. 
He was telling me to come to the spot that he got killed at. Damn. I always felt like if I would have went, I would have stopped it. Cause I f with Quando, you know, and I f and I and I was, you know, just met Vaughn. I felt like I probably could have OG the situation, you know. I ain't go out that night. So. Damn, man. Uh, and and okay, so when you get the news, is that those are like the first thing that you think about? That's like, the first thing I thought about when I got the news. I was supposed to be there. Is there a reason why you didn't go? Uh, I just ain't feel like going out, bro. Just some was I was like, man, I ain't I ain't going out because I had just came back in town. I had my fit everything. Just ain't go out, bro. Just ain't get them keys and go out. You guys, so you guys never really got a chance to work together. Nah. No. How'd you feel about the King Von documentary? Uh. I didn't watch it, bro. I watched like the, I would probably watch 10 minutes of it. And that's cause my partner was watching it. He was over there watching it. He put it on the dashboard. We pull up to Lennox and uh, that was it. When he came back in the car, we ain't watch it after that. I ain't, I ain't really get into it. I don't like, I don't like to get into YouTube talking about murder. You know, cause I know it'd be a lot of bullshit. Well, they did a documentary on you. Yeah. How'd you feel about that one? Um, I ain't like it. <laughs> I ain't like it. A lot of that shit be a lot of bullshit, bro. Like, people think they be knowing, but you don't know. You don't know. That's life. Nobody knows what somebody else did unless you were in the car. Uh, you did it. And these documentaries, I mean, they get millions of views too, bro, man. It, it, it's sad, bro. It's sad, bro. Like, you know, what they do to people and people got kids, bro. People got kids, make you, you don't even want to put your, let your little girl look on YouTube. You know, it's, they, 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 they heartless, bro. They heartless, you know. I was thinking about going to do a documentary of the people who doing it. <laughs> and lie about them and their family on documentary. I had started researching their kids' names, all kind of shit. My cousin was, man, don't get into all that shit. You know? I had a private investigator looking at looking at his wife. You know? How would you like if I put a a, a documentary of, of your wife and a doctor? Who she go get checkups with? How you like if I put your daughter school and where she goes to school at on social media and say I was just recording on your your, your wife picking her up from school? What if I say that your friend who OD'd in college you gave him the drugs? Somebody, what if I say somebody saw you at the frat house leaving? When he OD. And I have no proof of that. That's what you're doing to us. Because everybody had people lose lives. Everybody. What if you get tied into it over. Because you make it seem so real how you tied in. What if somebody did this to you and your family? See, that all they give a fuck about is clicks. That's all they give a fuck about, bro, is views, you know? So when somebody catch them and bat them in their face or knock their teeth out, the world should have no sympathy for them. It's no sympathy because you're not looking at the big picture. You're not looking at the big picture and that's all they do it for is, is likes. So somebody should bat them in their face, re refigure out their nose, and put them on social media for what? Likes. That's how it's supposed to go. But the world, you know, the world different. They wouldn't be doing all this 90s, early 2000s. All these youth, all this shit going on with them, they wouldn't be doing it. 
They wouldn't be making DVDs with this on it back in 2000 or, or the late 90s. They wouldn't be, it wouldn't have the nuts to do it because nobody could be seen what would happen to them. Now everybody got a camera, what we are afraid of. They wouldn't have the nuts to do this. Well, yeah, they, they get approached by the dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back, back in the early 2000s, so much happened and nothing got seen. Right. And they knew that. You were findable. It was the yellow pages. All kind, you were findable. People ran their cities. They doing it because what the world has turned into. If this was back in the game, they wouldn't be doing this to people. Yeah. Especially people who you say done done all this shit. You would be, you wouldn't think about it. You wouldn't think about it. Well, I would kind of like to get into your story a little bit. You know, we talked about it a little bit throughout the interview, but I, I kind of like to dive dive into it a little bit deeper, man. You know, you know what what was it like for you growing up, and you know in Baton Rouge and you know going through the struggles. I mean, Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge. I mean, I struggled as a kid, but it ain't feel like we struggled. When you from the hood, you don't really feel like you you struggling, struggling, because you're grateful for what you got. You know, I mean, we was grateful. I mean, we was still smiling every day. You smile less when you got more. When you was a kid, you smile way more than you smile as an adult. You played every day, went places, went behind the live. We always was smiling. Even when we was told no, I mean, <laughs> man. Your childhood is nothing like your childhood, man. I mean, as far as me, I'm gonna speak on me. I mean, we ain't have much, but it was always smiling. It was always something fun to do in the hood, bro. We made something out of nothing. It was, I mean, it was in a, man, we was, where I'm from is five, four streets. That's my neighborhood. You know, I'm from a section in South Baton Rouge, and it's four streets. And I had probably seven ATs on each street. Four streets and one project. So it's like a it's like a close-knit community. You know, uh, basketball was my first love. You know, I shoot that ball. Basketball was my first love, but I've been rapping since nine. Eight nine years old. I've been even when I was playing ball, I, I could rap. I always wanted to be a rapper too. And uh, when I when, when at one point I just became the best rapper in my project. Nobody could put me in. What inspired you to rap? Tupac. Not just Tupac. LL Cool J. You know I used to love I'm Bad. You know, all the rappers, man. I, you know, when you from the ghetto, you, your rappers are your biggest, your biggest role models, bro. Like everybody, you want look like the rappers. You want the girls like the rappers. You want the cars, the chains. So, you know, even to this day, you know, the rappers, the rappers was everything who you wanted to be. Like the people I respected was the drug dealers. The biggest drug dealers, the people I really respected. And, Cause they look like the rappers too. <laughs> but, you know, I respected how, how they would give to the old people and give to the kids and how they had all the women and shit. Like, you know, drug dealers and rappers, that's who, that's who inspired me to win. You know, that's who inspired me to want money. I mean, I look at them and be like, I'm gonna be like that one day. I used to always say, I used to tell a dope nigga, I'm gonna have more money than you. You know, so 
That's what they inspired me. How old were you when you jumped off the porch? Uh, like hustling every day. Fifteen, probably fifteen, fourteen. My daddy died when I was thirteen. Finna be fourteen. So around that time, that's when I really. My mama put me out at like fifteen. How did your dad passing away affect you? Were you guys close? Yeah. yeah that, that hurt me bad, bro. After that, it was. It was no holes barred. After that, man. I mean. I wasn't scared of nobody. Nobody could tell me that. All my uncles, you know, they drug dealers too. You know, so. And I wanted to help my mama, you know, I wanted to, even though my mama wouldn't, wouldn't, didn't agree with what I was doing. I mean, but I'm raised, I'm, I'm, I'm a hood baby. I'm raised in the, I'm, I'm, that's all I know is the hood. <laughs> like, you know, I was raised in the, my daddy was a street nigga. My, my mama come from a hood family. All of us was raised, raised in the hood. So that was just part of my life. You know, as a kid, I saw it all, bro. I mean, I saw my first murder at probably nine. You saw your first murder you know, I, at nine? I saw, I saw guns my whole life, you know, I mean. Weed in the air, I mean, selling dope. You know, my grandma house was the block, you know, so. My grandma house was the block where everybody hung in front of them and got money. Yeah. Seeing your first murder at nine, man, how do you, like, like, how did that affect you? What'd your family say? I mean, it just happened while we was outside. I mean, they ain't really say nothing. I, I, I can't say that. I didn't get in trouble for it. I mean, dude just rolled by on the bike, called his name when he turned around, shot him, killed him. Damn. Then his homeboys went in his pockets. Oh, man. Yeah. And I never trusted them niggas who went in his pocket. But, um, I mean, I ain't getting in trouble for it. I mean, they had a dude grab me and pick me up and ran me to my grandmother's house. Uh, I was just happy to tell a story to my boys. It, was, it wasn't funny or nothing, but I, you know, I remember me telling the story, and they sitting down like, hey, "What happened?" What? You know, it was like, I mean. Hearing gunshots was normal, like where I'm from. You'd be like, you heard that? And we talking about something else, you know. But seeing it was kind of different, cause where I'm from, everybody told guns, bro. Like it was a, it's a fashion. You know, everybody told guns to protect themselves. When you from the trenches, everybody told guns. Everybody selling drugs. Especially in that era, you know, the late 80s and 90s, you know, money was out there, bro. Everybody was getting money. Do you think if your dad would have lived, do you think you would have went down the same path that you went down? No. I probably would have later. I mean, but I would have had to be 19 where I can think for myself because I fear my dad. My dad wasn't going for that. He didn't want me to be a drug dealer. You know, he didn't want, he wanted me to be a, a citizen. You know, even though he showed me all this shit, <laughs> you know, that's crazy. You know, uh, I remember my daddy used to, he used to lie to me and tell me he was smoking cigarettes. You know, he used to always smoke that weed, but he used to <laughs> tell me it was cigarettes. and. So I got to smelling his cigarettes, then I smelled my mama's cigarettes. And I was like eight. And uh, I told him one day, I said, Dad, I know that's not cigarettes. 
and he just started laughing, you know, but he basically was, he basically was making me out of man, you know, he was just telling me don't bag down from people, uh, you know, uh, I was his heart, bro. I was in my dad's heart, you know, I was, I was his baby boy, you know, and I was a badass, so, you know. What was Boosie like in high school? I was a class clown, bro. I was a class clown. Anybody will tell you how I act on Instagram? That was me in high school. I was the class clown. I dropped out in 11th grade. Uh, but I was the class clown, bro. After my dad died, I quit basketball. I just... I just spiraled down and straight, you know, quit school. I tried alternative school for a couple of years, came back in 12th grade. And uh, I was just, I was, you know, I had a rap career then. You know, well, I music just, was taking off already. Yeah, 11th grade, I was that, I was the shit, bro. Like, that was my year. When I dropped out of school, that was my year, bro. Like, I really blew up kind of quick, bro. And, you know, I just took off, bro. I mean, I can't, I tried to come, I took off a year and a half. I tried to come back to school and when I came back to school, I had two cars, man. I was, I was living, bro. I mean, I just felt I was too big for school, bro. I just felt like I don't need it, man. I mean, I was, I was really doing it for my grandmother, man. My grandmother really wanted me to, she they knew I had a brain. My grandma really wanted me to, you know, she like, you can stay with me, but you going to school. So I really was doing it for my grandmother and, uh, I knew I couldn't stay in my grandmother's house if I ain't go to school. You know, my grandma, she know she she know I sell dope, she know I do all that, but I'm going to school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was a whole thing. And when I when I decided I that school wasn't for me, I knew I had to move out my my grandmother's house. So I I went me and my me and my baby mama went and got my own apartment. We got a one bedroom apartment in the project. How old were you when you did this? 11th grade? Yeah. Did you ever graduate? On death row. Oh. I got my GED on death row. You went to jail. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever have a real job? Nah, nah, I tried to work at uh, Taco Bell when I was 13, 14. Uh, I lied on the uh, on the thing and they found out I was too young. Mm, that was the only time you ever even tried? Nah, I mean, I was trying to do it because my older, my older boys, they they were like 15 curbing them. And I was just trying to get a summer job to try to make some money, so. That ain't work. That ain't work. But I've been, I've been, I always kept a bankroll, bro. I started off washing cars. Um, I used to watch for the drug dealers. I used to just ride down the street. That was one of my first jobs. I just ride down the street on a bicycle, and when the police come, I make a sound so the so the so the, so the hustlers know. I, I've been saving money since six years old, probably. Just saving money, putting it up, just trying to have money. Six, man. Yeah, my mama reminded me the other day. She said, remember you used to keep a jar, you used to save your money? So, I'm a hustler, bro. Like, that's what I'm known for in the hood. And big Boots Hatchin, he, he know how to hustle. Like, I know how to get money. You know, what what point do you think you started really making really good money? Uh, 15, 16, 15. I went on a block called Garfield Street. 
that's the street I'm on, but I went up the hill. Like it's like round the corner up the hill. And it was probably like six of us. All of us 16, 15. And uh like right around the corner from LSU. And um, we had a weed spot that didn't stop, bro. When I say didn't stop, everybody playing with, we 15, 16 years old playing with 10, 15,000, 15,000, 20,000. So that was like my first, like really getting money, like really getting money, bro. And, that's around the time I was rapping fully too. So once I started rapping and my music took off, that's when I got that's when I got hit with the hundred pounds and you know, shit like that. Yeah. So the music The music made people front me. Uh. You know, the music made people front me and and the block I had, you know, uh, it made people front me. And uh after Garfield, I say when I got probably 17, I went in front of my grandma's house and just started my own block. It was already a block, but kind of took over the block. And I believe you said that, you know, once the music started taking off, you just left the streets alone? I ain't leave the streets alone probably till I was... Probably about 22, probably 22, 22. Cause I, I never was gonna leave the music alone. I mean, the, the, the game alone, cause I always was making more money from the game than the music. My bag from the streets was always bigger than my bag from the music. You know what I'm saying? So, one of my plugs kind of made me want to leave the game alone. He was like, you know, you keep coming back and scoring and, you know, that shit don't make no sense, you know, like, when I got to getting 20 a show and shit like that, it ain't make no sense, you know. I come back with 80,000, you know, trying to buy a dope. I'm like, Nigga, this ain't no, I ain't no re-upping with this. This rap shit is the truth once you get it. It's no re-up. It's no re-up. I don't have to score. I mean, it's no re-up. Everything is this. It's no re-up. You know, they can't take me to jail for rapping my music. You know, it was, it was a reality check. You know, why well, I pay pay this for a bird when I'm getting twenty twenty something thirty a show? So that's when I just said. Fuck it, man. Yeah, I mean, I still was pointing people in the right direction, you know, winning, you know, on certain shit, you know, send them to my people. I might win six, seven thousand air rip, but I wasn't hands on, you know. I just said it wasn't worth it. What do you think was like the first big thing you bought when when the rap money really started coming in? Um. My first mansion. Mm, you bought that before a car? Oh, I had cars way before. I bought had cars off my drug man. I had 745. I was 19 with a 745. Eli, Davins. I had four, five cars at that time. Before the rap money came in, I probably had 15, 16 cars. Bro. Street money. But yeah, the music takes off, man. And, you know, not too long after, you know, I'm seeing Boosie and everything, I see you catch this wild case. Yeah. You know, and uh, they're, they're bringing some really serious charges. You know, I remember the video where you come out and you're like, I'm innocent. You know, uh, what was that like for you? And, you know, going through that and you know, making it through that. Uh. It's just, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a time in my life, you know. It's just a 
just was a time in my life where, you know, I had to, you know, I had to sit down for a minute, you know. I had to sit down for a minute. I was facing a lot of crazy shit, so I mean, I took it, I, I took it, I took it, took it with my chest out. You know, I ain't bring nobody with me. You know, I ain't. I took it with my chest out, bro. You know, I don't regret nothing. You know, what I mean, everything happened for a reason. I wouldn't be the man I am today if that wouldn't happen. I wouldn't have the wisdom today if that wouldn't happen. I wouldn't know who's who if that if all that shit don't happen in your life, you still be blind. When shit get real like that, you know what's real and you know what's fake. If it never get real like that, you'll never know. You know. Did you think you were gonna make it out of it? Yeah. Yeah. I knew them people ain't had nothing. I knew it was a weak ass case, bro. I already knew. All that shit was bogus, bro. So like, I, I, I guess your co-defendant, at, at first he accused you of things. He, yep, yep. And then he switched it up during trial? Yeah, he came to trial and he, you know, he told the truth. What was the trial like? You know, like, I mean, even though you feel like you're going to be I innocent, mean, I, I, you, you know, know, my trial was, like a mafia trial, bro. Snipers on the roof. I mean, anonymous jury. Anonymous jury. Yeah, I had. It was the one of the first anonymous jury since the Marcelo tried, you know, in, in New Orleans. You know, I had anonymous jury. I mean, it was crazy, bro. All the police on horses, snipers on the roof. I mean. They built it. I mean, they built it. They built it. Were you facing the death penalty? Yeah. So you're facing the death penalty, man. That's that's crazy. Yeah, I said three years on death row. Sheesh. In Louisiana, you don't have to be convicted to go to death row. You just gotta be have a death row charge. And they automatically send you to death row because they think you not coming off death row. Automatically. Automatically think you're guilty. Yeah, you automatically go to the death row. And, yeah. What's death row like over there? Um, it wasn't bad as people might think. You know I mean, you got some negative days, you know, some down days. When you look at, when you walk walk the hall and you look down and you thinking, damn, everybody on here got a death sentence, you know. You have some down days, but you get closer to God, man. You, you get in a situation like that, you get closer to God. I mean, it was different, man. I mean, it was different, bro. Yeah, damn. Now, did you ever run into Especially when you hear about all the shit that they did. You're like, damn, I was... You look at people like, you know, I used to be looking like, I hear stories and nigga, I'd be like, nigga, you did all that and you, you scared to get caught with cigarettes? <laughs> what the f nigga, you a, you a bitch, you a, you a, you a, you got a little bitch and you, I don't usually used to like that shit, like nigga, you scared to get caught with a phone? You got a death penalty? Like, I ain't, I ain't. I got into it with a couple of death row inmates, bro. Like, mother f trying to watch sight. people eating people all day and shit. Nigga, I'm trying to, I'm trying to watch the NCAA tournament, March Madness. This stupid mother. Man, I don't even want to think about this. Shit. You got in some fights? Nah, you can't touch nobody on death row. Oh. Yeah, nobody's allowed to touch one another or come out at the same time. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, you isolated. All you could do is throw shit on people. Uh, I had a couple shit fights. Damn. Yeah. That's, yeah, sheesh. Is that yeah. something that happens all the time over there or? I've heard about them in Chicago. They got, they call Yeah, I mean, it happened. I mean, it happened. It happened. 
That's the only way you fight. I mean, it's the only way you can fight when you're on death row. What happens afterwards, though, man? I mean, somebody's got to clean it up. You got to go take a shower. You know, what if there's, if, I mean, do, do you have showers accessible at the time? Most of the time, one of y'all get locked up or both of y'all get locked up. Somebody going to come um, clean it up. I mean, they got all this. They work your tear all day. I mean, they got to clean this shit up. Most of the time when you do it, when they when somebody shit you down, uh, you clean it up before they come down so they don't smell it. You powder your room out and shit, and then you go get them back when you when it's your time to get on the hallway for uh for your hour. It's time for you to get them back. Damn. Well, you you beat your case. Yeah. You know. Uh, I mean, even I though found, you, I was found not guilty in thirty five minutes. Man, that's crazy that they even put you through that. Yeah, 35 minutes. So even with an anonymous jury and all this stuff, they still don't they didn't have a they don't sound like they had a chance to uh to convict you at all. I mean, even though you were pretty confident you were gonna make it, man, I mean, you know, hearing that, you know, innocent verdict, it had to have been really relieving. Oh, well, I was happy. I'm, yeah, man, I put my hand. I was happy as a mother. You know, I, sh I, I, I cried inside, bro. I cried inside, bro. I mean, guards all at the jails had made bets with other guards that I'd be found guilty. Uh, it was, it was crazy, bro. The guards were making bets. That's crazy. Yeah. And I was so happy because now I was able to go to population. And that was everything to me. You know, I had been fighting to get in population forever. Because I was in population the first two years I was in prison. But when I got my, of those charges, they put me on the death row. So I was going back to population, you know. Even when they didn't want me, you know, I had to sign shit, all kinds of shit that I can go in population. And uh, I knew it was going to be a better time doing my time, you know, and um, I got right there around C murder, so it was it was it was sweet, man. I mean, the warden laid me out, man. Shout out the warden came, the warden laid me out. So you and C murder were you guys got to hang out or or just yeah, we was in the same dorm, bro. Same dorm, slept right by each other, bro. No shit. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Uh, what was that like? Uh, we jokes together. I mean, did man. you guys know each other on the streets at all? Nah, nah. Okay, but you're you're a famous rapper now, and he's a famous rapper. Yeah. So you guys, yeah. you know, you guys yeah. do got. When that I first problem. went to Angola, though, he was he was always reaching out to me, looking out for me. He was always looking out for me. You know, he got a long hand, bro. So he was always looking out for me. But when I came back, you know, it was from my trial, it was we together now. So, I mean, it was you know, it's a part of my life that I, I'm glad I got to experience, you know. I got a lot of gain from him, you know. He used to be on my ass, man. He was like my big brother. He used to get on my ass, like real shit, bro. Like, cause I would stay getting locked up. I get locked up. I'm a violator, you know, I'm kind of like a violator in jail. I was I was a violator, I was kind of like a young hardhead, like I was, a, and he ain't like to see me being on lockdown for shit, so he used to be getting on my ass. How do you feel about his appeals and everything? Is there any chance he's gonna come home? Uh, I think it is, man, I mean, I mean, I think it is, bro, because... He's been gone, what, over 20 years now, right? Yeah, and uh, everybody who... It's crazy, bro. It's, it's just a bad case, bro, because everybody who testified against him recanted their statements and told them why, what happened to make them testify. One of the guys, baby mama, got, got, got took off a whole, a whole charge with a baby or some shit. It's just, they did whatever to, to send them to prison, bro. And, you know, 20 something years is a long time. 
you know, and we developed a friendship, bro. And you know, I, I pray for him all the time, bro. Every time I see something about something in jail, I close my eyes and say a prayer that he come home, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, damn. He's been gone a while, man. And and he doesn't have no chance of parole, or, or is he... I don't really know the situation. Uh, when I talk to him, I don't even talk about that, man. You know, I don't really talk about that. He might bring it up, let me know what he got. What he got going on with his situation, but I just be happy to hear from him, bro. And uh, trying to get him, you know. Uh, he gave me a, I got, I got like, I got features, you know, features from him. anybody trying to buy some C murder features. We giving all the money to him, so um, I can get you some C murder features. Tap in and get those. Yep, tap in and get those C murder features right now. Uh, I just want them home, bro. Like, that's all I can say. I want them home. Man. Oh man, well, uh, definitely free C murder, man. He been been down a minute. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I, all the stuff I've heard is crazy. All the inconsistencies and yeah, people bro, pulling like, their state their their statements and everything is crazy. Any other state, he would have been home. Mm, Louisiana. Louisiana, bro. We still got Napoleon laws, bro. Our laws different. I just told you what I got for third offense marijuana, bro. Right. Yeah. You get forty for manslaughter, bro. Other cities, you other states, you might get five. Five for manslaughter. That's about. That's about it. Yeah. Second degree murder. If you take it to trial, it's an automatic life sentence in Louisiana. That's crazy. Any other state, ten to fifteen. 15, 10, Napoleon law. They still go pick cotton, bro. Turnips oh, wow. every day. Come out the field with their hands cut up, bro. Shit you saw on life when they when everybody chained up with that man with that horse over him. That's what's going on in Louisiana, bro. Damn. Yeah, bro. 26 cents a day, some shit like that. Yeah. Mm. It's called hard time. Yeah, man. That's, I mean, those are, those are, you would, you would think somebody would do something because those, at all the, the, I mean, in California, there's a lot of laws being changed. A lot of, a lot of people who got life sentences. They did like 20. You know and they get let go. And they get let go. Nah, not Louisiana. Mm. Not Louisiana. That's crazy, man. Damn. Well, Boosie, man, I, I appreciate you, man. Uh, you know, taking the time. Uh, dope interview. Man, I'm, I'm glad we finally uh, got to get one in. You got to do it uh, again. You man. know, yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. You know, now that we're. We're connected, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I just appreciate you, man. Let's do it. Yeah, let's right. do it. I love it. All right, bro. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.